was a quiet Sunday morning at the Auckland Art Gallery on August the 9th, 1998, when an armed man in a disguise entered the main doors yelling for the staff and patrons to hit the deck. The gunman knew exactly what he was after. A single Victorian era painting, still on top, by French artist Tissot. The thief heads directly to his prize, crudely wrenches the frame from the wall, then employs a crowbar to prise the painting from the frame. In the process of the crime, he pushes an intervening security guard to the ground. Then, after a little over four minutes, departs the galley towards the neighbouring park, discharging a barrel of a shotgun to deter anyone following. Makes his way through an alley to Princess Street, and hightails it on a high-powered Honda motorbike, with the painting slung over his shoulder in a bag, and then onto the southern motorway. Little did the mullet-wigged man under the helmet know, a bystander had already taken note of his rego, and the police already had their first lead. The man behind the brazen daylight art theft was Ricardo Sand. At least that was the name he was using in 1998. He was born Anthony Ricardo Uri in 1950 and also used the names Ricardo Romanov, as in the Russian royalty, which was his Uzbek wife Alina's adopted name. But like her husband, she was rather a shadowy figure and employed a number of aliases. I was never able to locate her real name. The flamboyancy and names also extended to Ricardo Genovese. If the name Genovese sounds vaguely familiar, it was taken from the New York Mafiosa clan. Plus, the rather mundane sounding Anthony Arden. Let's stick with Ricardo with one C and two N's sand to make things easier for both you and me. His four decade life of crime on both sides of the Tazan was extensive and saw him behind bars for at least three of those decades. He had a penchant for armed robberies and tearing away from the scene leaving authorities in his dust at the same time leaving enough evidence for him to be collared, at least on this side of the Tasman. In Australia, his dozen-plus robberies traversed the breadth of the country, Perth to Sydney. He escaped detection and openly admitted to his participation well after the statute of limitations had expired. In 1984, in the company of Charles Wilbury, he held up an armoured guard security van outside the Birkenhead Food Town supermarket, scoring a massive $295,000. They both got 10 years looking at striped sunlight, the judge describing Sand as a menace to society. Late into this sentence, Sand escaped the prison farm he was working on, going on the run for four weeks in which, amongst other crimes, stole a motorbike, totaled it, and when caught, claimed he was suffering from amnesia. Forgot, somehow, he should have been inside a cell. The headline in the New Zealand Herald sums this up nicely. Freshly out of the clink in 1993, and with no intent of joining civilian life, Sand entered the ANZ Bank in Kirikiri and robbed them at gunpoint, escaping on, you guessed it, a motorbike. Sand's escape from the scene was a brief one. He and his cohort were tracked down just outside the town and cornered by armed police. For this, he got five years. Plus, he was implicated in the planned robbery of Webb's auction house. Just after release, Sands travelled to Singapore where he married the Russian blonde he had been corresponding with. For matters obscured by privacy laws, Elena Romanov was denied entry into New Zealand, yet did manage to immigrate into Australia. A year later, Sands was pulling the priceless painting off the wall of the Auckland Art Gallery. Let us now take a look at that robbery in more depth. In all cases of art theft, stealing the item is a relatively easy part of the process. There was, and still is, only one still on top in the world, 
and Tiso was a reasonably high profile artist. His paintings of the idol rich and biblical scenes fetched seven sums on the open market. That sort of figure was reflected in the insured value of the painting, two million. Four days after the fifth, a typed ransom note along with a Polaroid photo appeared in the post at the Auckland District Law Society asking for $250,000. The insurance company also around that time issued a no questions asked reward for $50,000 for the safe return of the painting. Bingo, they had a bite. The anonymous person collared Ricardo Sand. The police only needed his name to know that lead was red hot. Sand's longtime modus being threatening staff with a gun and fleeing on a high powered motorbike. He was soon tracked down to a house in Port Waikato and a search of the property was undertaken. Eight days after being flogged, the badly damaged painting was found under Sand's bed inside a sack. Needless to say, a trial ensued, which made Gilbert and Sullivan look like non-fiction. Not only had the police found the painting under Sand's bed, the typewriter used to type the ransom note, and also the spent shotgun casing both matched the one in his house. Then there was the little matter of the motorbike in the garage with the same description and rego number of the one seen fleeing the scene. Despite the overwhelming evidence, Sands maintained his innocence and claimed he found the painting whilst vacuuming the house. Yes, really. His legal team urged him to plead guilty and take the rap. His reaction was to fire them and represent him in court, having, I'm presuming, plenty of previous experience as to proceedings. There is, of course, a saying, a man who represents himself in court has a fall for a client. Sands' defence testimony bordered on laughable and gave us some insight into his thinking, or lack of it, at the time. His defence centred around motive, argued he did not need to steal a 19th century painting. That's because in between benefit fraud and smuggling endangered birds, he had oodles of income. Besides, the painting itself wasn't that good and looked like something from a garage sale. The judge wasn't overly impressed with his defence, just the opposite. She issued Sands with an extraordinary lengthy sentence. 17 years. Down the track, Sands claimed he had a buyer for the painting already lined up. A shady, nameless Hong Kong businessman who was willing to pay $800,000 for that particular painting. But on seeing the poor condition after the theft, he pulled out of the deal. What you now see in front of you is a grain of salt under a microscope. Once the deal fell through, he went to plan B, the ransom. The motive was to set himself up with his Russian bride and have enough money to live their lives out. Fourteen years later he was officially released in 2012. By then the painting was repaired and devalued by a million and back on the wall. In 2006 though he unofficially released himself. Escape number two come crime spree lasted seven days and mirrored the previous one except he stole a car this time. He got two more years added to his lag for that. Just months after his official release, and after he'd said he was a changed man, he was back behind bars after breaching bail conditions. A year later, 2013, he was involved in the theft of a limited edition Ducati motorbike worth $130,000 and found himself in the big house for the umpteenth time. The Ducati case is particularly complex and needless to say Sand's statements as to how he came into the possession of the stolen bike, that's to say using funds from a previous robbery and an unnamed mate in the UK who stored it for him awaiting for his release, need to be taken with a few of these. 
His DNA, however, was found at the scene of the robbery, and a key for the motorbike found at his house, which is more than can be said about the expense of limited motorbike, that was never found. His legal team appealed that conviction and had it overturned on what I would humbly describe as a technicality. Since 2018, Sands has been a free man, kept his head low. Closing in on 70, he has set his sights on becoming a super bike rider. Desires to reunite with his daughter he adopted at birth. I doubt either of those ambitions will come to fruition. As the police said about Sands at one stage, which one I forget, there's so many. Once a crim, always a crim. Just note I have done another fascinating New Zealand art theft video. It's one of my personal faves. It involves the House of Lords kidnapping. It's got the lot. There's a link below and on your screen. Thanks very much for tuning in and I'll spot you next time. Bye for now.